it's raining. <laughs> Thought it was just gonna be cloudy out today, but it's raining, so we're inside and we're gonna do a fun little felting project. I've told you guys that I'd make little baby booties from my Angora wool, little cashmere baby booties. Um, so this is just a sweet little example. I've made a couple of them and I've mailed them out to the little babies in the family, but these ones haven't been sent out or bought yet. I think I'm gonna put them in my farm stand. These are just a really simple, sweet little baby booty. And it's just, these ones are called Dreama booties because I made them with Dreama fiber. So you know that I have my three Angora bunnies and I collect their wool. So I have a few little bags here of my Angora wool. This is Applejack. I've been collecting this since January. And so it's quite a bit of fiber and it's a nice light apricot color. That's Applejack. And these ones were made out of Dreama. This is my little Dreama bunny. She's called a lilac color. So that is a very, very pale light gray. And then I made these sweet little flowers from my Shirley sheep wool. Shirley is a Merino Icelandic ewe. There's a little hair on there. And I've been watching these sweet little videos on YouTube where they make flowers, and so I've been experimenting, um, making some different types of flowers. These are just some examples of some of the flowers that I've made with my own dyed Shirley and Laverne wool. And I've also been putting these little white bits here. Those are milkweed silk. I grow milkweed, well, milkweed grows in my yard, and I collect the seeds um, to grow it around the border edges of my yard. And the milkweed silk I collect, and actually I have some right here. This is my milkweed silk that is left. Um, I've been using it a lot, but it starts out in these little pods. They look like a little bean, like that big. And when they fluff, you've seen milkweed silks blowing in the wind. They're kind of like dandelion silks, except they're much longer. And they have this beautiful, almost prismatic um, coloring to them. You can like see the different colors of the rainbow if you look really up close. So been experimenting with my milkweed silk and I've been really liking the effects that you get from that. These are some little flowers that I made just the other day from a pretty scarlet dyed wool. This was Shirley Sheep. And in the middle, I just used those little milkweed silks. So these came out, they look really pretty. I kind of wish I had done them in blue because then they would look like morning glories. But they kind of look like little petunias or something, very sweet. And then these are the two that we're gonna use today to put on our little booties. I just made these little yellow buttercups is what I was trying to go for. And those are just Shirley sheep wool with a little bit of pink and yellow and one or two little milkweed silks on the inside just to give it a little bit of a flower look to them. And then I make those little felted balls out of my wool and I just glue them in there. Easy peasy. So I'm going to show you guys how we do this today. And also I have a few extra little things that I got to help me with my felting. So we're going to go over those when we come to them. A um, couple of fun things. So when we talk about those as we're setting up. Okay. This does not look like baby booties yet. Let me get these flowers out of here. But it's going to. This is what we're going to start with. This is called our resist. I just cut it out of a little piece of foam and I can use it over and over and over again um, when I'm making my booties. I try not to cut it when I cut into, you'll see when we get to the part I cut into it and I did accidentally cut it right there. So all I'm gonna do is take a piece of tape and just patch over that real quick. There we go. Just so we have a nice hard edge right there, beautiful. So I have my resist. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a nice little sandwich. We're gonna start with a nice little towel with a lamb on it. <laughs> All of my tea towels have slowly started to get dyed from the felting process. <laughs> All right, this is my little bamboo mat. And then we're gonna put down a piece of bubble wrap. And I like to put it, I think you're supposed to put it bubble side up. So it's bubble side up, bubble wrap. And then we're gonna put our resist right down on there. So we have our nice little setup here. 
I think what we're gonna do is make a pair of Applejack booties. I made Dream of booties the other day and I haven't made Applejack booties before, so let's use his fiber. All I've been doing, you guys, is I know you're supposed to lay it down nice and soft, but I've been finding that it's just a little bit faster and easier and it's working the same for me if I just take a nice soft clump of this bunny wool straight off of my Angora bunnies and I just lay it down like this. Our first layer is just going to be a nice soft cloud of fluffy, fluffy bunny fiber. And it is kind of thick, but that's because I don't want to do double layers. I've been doing double layers where I do one layer one direction and one layer the other direction. And it's just taking me a little bit too long to complete a pair of booties. So this is just a little bit faster but it has not compromised the quality or the way that they come out. They've been really, really nice. So, just taking some little tufts. If I see any little bits, I'll just pull that out of there. Keep it nice and light and fluffy. Not good to do this outside on a windy day. <laughs> oh, there we go. Just a little bit extra right there. I'm just looking at it, eyeballing it and seeing if I need to add any extra fiber anywhere. So there's a spot right there. And uh, that looks pretty good for our first layer. So I'm just going to set the fibers in place by putting down a net over the top, a really fine mesh net. There we go. Oh, I did have a few little pieces of grass in there. Applejack, he's a sweet little bun, but he was getting into the grass. So all I'm gonna do is set my fiber to the side. I'm gonna take my little mesh net, put it right down over the top. This is my new little tool. It's called a ball bower or a um, ball sprinkler. And it's just gonna replace what I was using in the past. Um, like a little nose squeegee thing. So this thing just is like a little sprinkler. I'm just gonna put some nice water down. And then I'm gonna give it a little bit of Dawn dish soap. Now what I've been doing is putting another piece of bubble wrap. This time it's bubble side down. And I'm just gently pressing it down and in place, getting the water to move through the fiber. And I can check it and see if I need to add more water, which I think I should. Add a little more water here. And a little more water there first time you need to add a little bit more water. After this we're not going to add so much water because we already did and it's just going to absorb through the different layers. So that's our first layer. Pretty sure we have enough water in there. It's okay if it's a little bit rough and uneven. We're going to make it look nicer in a minute. I'm just going to put my hand underneath the first layer of bubble wrap and on top hold on to one of those little feet and quickly flip it. So I flipped it over. And then I'm just going to gently peel back this layer of bubble wrap. And I'm going to go through. Oh, my tape is not holding. Okay. False alarm on the tape, you guys. Forgot that tape doesn't stick when it's wet. Okay. That didn't work. It's okay. I don't think that should bother us at all. That little, that little piece there, that little tiny cut that I made should be fine. All I'm doing is going around and gently pulling the edge of my wool over my resist. We're going to encase this resist in wool on both sides. There we go. Just gently, gently. I don't want to pull too hard because it's really not felted at all at this point. It's just wet bunny wool. And then what I've been finding is I like to take my little ball bower here with a little bit of water and I just go down and I gently push this and smoosh my edges. And if I need a little more water, I can add it. While I'm doing this, I'm just kind of flinging it towards the inside in a direction like this. There we go. Perfect. All right, we're done with our first layer. On the first side, we're gonna do our first layer on the second side. So all I'm doing is taking a little bit more Applejack fiber and the exact same thing that we did the first time. We're just gonna lay it down the 
sweet little apple jack. I've never used his wool before, but it's so nice and soft. If I find little mats or anything like that that I don't want to use, I just set them to the side. There's always a use for things later. Like I could use those to stuff something if I have enough of them, or I can use them on my um, indoor potted plants. I like to use wool, dirty wool bits and wool mats in place of mulch because it keeps the, um, the moisture in on my plants and they really like it and they're happy. Do, 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 do. There, laying down this nice thick layer of wool. And because it's so nice and thick, I don't have to do two layers, I'll just do the one layer. I am gonna make sure that it extends over the edges just a little bit just a little bit over the edges all the way around so that when we flip it over, we have something to pull over the edge again and that kind of holds it all together in one little cohesive booty. All right, I think we're good here. Just eyeballing it and I'm adding a little bit of extra fiber here and there because it looks like it needs it. I don't wanna see the resist and that's what I'm going for. Okay, looks good. I have another little mesh net here. I'm going to put it down over the top. We're going to take some water with the ball sprinkler. We're going to get that all wet. We're going to put a little soapy down. Do, 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 do. Oh. Here we go. Maybe a little bit more water because it's just the first time. And then I'm going to put down my bubble wrap face side down. Bubble down, bumpies down. Gently press, press, press. Get all the air out, the soap and water in, because remember, all we need to felt is soap and water and friction. Soap and water and friction. You have those things, it'll felt. All right, let's see if we had enough water in there. Looks great. We're gonna just go underneath the original layer Hold onto that little booty and flip it. All right, we're back to the first side again. So we're going to take our net off gently. Here we go. You can see all around the edges. That's just from the previous layer. We want that so we can flip it over the edge and make it a nice seamless unit one beautiful connected booty. There we go. If you don't do this well enough, then you're gonna have weird ridges on your edges. You'll see. I hope that we don't have any ridges, but a seam right down the middle. Sometimes if you don't do enough of this, you can have a seam that tears and your booties come apart. So you want this to be a nice solid, solid edge. There we go. You can take your finger gently, or you can take the end of your ball sprinkler like I showed you before, and we're just smoothing down the edges of that layer that we just pulled over the edge. There we go. I don't want to push too hard because the wool is still really loose, and if I push too hard, it'll start moving around. You'll have bald edges and bald patches, and it'll look weird, so don't move it around too much. Be very gentle at this stage. All right, let's get our little fiber bag. Do it again, we're back onto the first side. So we're gonna do, this is our first side, second layer. Let's add some wool. This time, since we've already gone around the edges really nicely, I'm not gonna go as close to the edges. I will still overlap the edges a little bit, um, but not as much, because I don't want my edges to be big and bulky. I just want to make sure that it holds the whole slipper together all the way around. So we've already established that with our first layer. So this layer is just pretty much gonna be like right down on top of the shape of your resist. With a little bit going over the edge here and there. Oh, see, I got a big mat here. I just don't feel like messing with that, so I set it aside. And later on, I can use that as stuffing when I make a little stuffed animal. There we go. Do, 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 do. Down on top. Beautiful. Lovely. Make 
make sure there are no open gaps or places that need a little bit more. That looks like it needs a little bit more. Oh, it's so fine, it sticks to your fingers. Okay. See where this was kind of pulled over the edge a little bit? I want to pull that back in so it's not overlapping too much. Hey, stop. Okay. You behave. Okay. There we go. We are going to cover this with our net. And since we put down so much water the first time, I'm not going to add any more at first. I'm just going to put down my bubble wrap and press and see if it absorbs the last layer of water. And if it needs any more, we'll add some more. Squishy, squishy, squishy. It's like I'm playing with Play Doh. All right, let's check it. Yep, does not need any more water. Looks really good. So we're going to flip her over. Here we go. I'm going to hold on to that bottom booty. Flip the whole project over. At this point, we call it a project. <laughs> We've graduated. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to open it up gently, and I'm just going to pull over this little tiny border edge. It's a little bit smaller this time because I didn't need as much to go over the edge. It's very thin, barely there in some places, and if you can't really grip it, you can just use your finger to go under and curl it, on, curl it over the top. There we go, as fine as lace. Ooh. So this is our second side, second layer. Keeping track in our heads when I do this by myself and I'm playing music and I'm dancing around and I'm talking to Aaron and I get distracted. I have to have a little system for counting my layers and keeping track. Otherwise I'll forget and I don't want it to be uneven and be like thicker on one side. So what I usually do is I have like little scraps of wool on the side here and I'll just put down like a few scraps of wool. I'll be like, this is the first side. Now I've done it on the second side. And I have a little system for how I lay down my little wool scraps to keep track of things. <laughs> Everybody has their little way of keeping track and that's how I'm doing it. All right, so I'm gonna do another layer. And again, on this side does not need to overlap as much as it has in the past. Over the edges, it's just going to be primarily right in the center, right on top of the shape of your little resist. The resist, I got the idea for the resist from a YouTube video actually. Um, this was not my idea. <laughs> Get all these ideas from other people. So I should give them the credit, but I forget what their names are. But they are on YouTube and you can watch the little videos. Um, I believe she has, um, you can send away for the resist for the measurements and everything. Um, she'll like send you a little PDF clip and you can print it out so you have the exact measurements. I just kind of eyeballed it and it worked out pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Okay, that looks nice and thick. For our second side, second layer, I'm going to cover it up with the net. Since we added a lot of water the first time, we're just gonna put down the bubbly side of our bubble wrap and press and see if that fiber presses into the wet project that we've already started. It should. I did the, the first time on the other side, so it should have enough water this time. Mm -mm. All right, let's check it out. Good. All right, so now that we know that it has enough water, we're going to flip it over this is our first side again, and it is our third layer. So first thing I'm gonna do is just pull over that little bit of edge fiber. No little stragglers left behind here. We just get them all with our finger. It's okay if it's long and straggly, just bring it on in. Always bringing it in towards the center. Working with this Angora fiber is pretty fun. It's really soft, it's really fine. 
feels like you're working with a soft fluff, like a peanut butter or like porcelain dough. It's really nice. Porcelain clay, I should say. Oh, okay. We barely had any to go over on this side. That's okay. Just a little bit. Okay. That's it right there. Just gonna gently bring it in towards the center with the back of my fingers, very gently. Now remember, if you see like a little piece of stick or straw or something, if it's on the top layer, try to resist picking it out. If you have to pick something out, I do recommend using like a little, this is a felting um, needle for f dry felting, for needle felting. You can take something like that and just gently pick, pick, pick until you get it and then pull it out gently. But, oh, I like to just leave things in. If you see something in there, oh, let's see about this one. Can I get that out? Uh, well, I think I can get that one out. So there, you can get it out, great. If you can't and if it's causing you too much trouble and it's pulling too much, just leave it. It's underneath a couple of layers, nobody's gonna notice. There, leave it. The more you pick at something, the worse it's gonna get. I'm just gonna start pulling all these fibers off because they're not stuck in place. So leave it. <laughs> Let's put down another layer and just ignore it. This time, back to my first side, I'm gonna do my layer like on the inside. I'm gonna try not to overlap my edge. Um, at this point, I don't need to and I don't want my edges to be too bulky. So I'm just gonna be taking this soft fluffy fiber opening it up and fluffing it with my fingers and just setting it down like a little cloud right down on top of my resist, but I'm staying away from the edges as much as I can. That's a pretty big mat. I'm gonna get rid of that. had my bunnies out and then it started raining. Didn't think it was going to rain, so I had to run out there, bring them into their little hutches in the barn, keep them nice and warm and dry. In the winter time, I buy romaine lettuce for them. They really enjoy the romaine lettuce, but now that they're going out onto fresh grass, that is more exciting for them than romaine lettuce. Okay, that looks pretty good. Staying away from my edges, so it's just like right down on top of the center, like a little cloud. Let's cover it up. Since we've done this before and we didn't add water last time, I am just gonna add a little bit this time. Just a little bit. Okay. And then we'll put down our bubble wrap. Press it down. We're gonna flip it one last time. And if you wanted to put down a design or put down like say some milkweed silk, this is your layer that you wanna do it. Um, on these, I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just gonna do straight Angora fiber just for this video. But if you wanted to, this was the time. This is the layer you put down some kind of, oh now see, some of my fibers did come through. I'm just gonna gently go around. You could put down like another color and put down a pattern. You could put down like, you could do swirls with another color. You could do polka dots. You could do a lot of fun things, stripes. You could take another color of wool and put it right down the middle here on both sides so that when you go to cut it, you have like a straight edge line to guide you. So there are a lot of fun things you could do, but I'm just gonna leave these nice and natural because they look so pretty. Okay, that looks pretty good. One last layer, you guys, here we go. We're gonna take this fiber. We're gonna just lay it on down here. Stick into the middle, not letting it overlap, keeping out any of the little bits that I don't like, the undesirables. This 
this is a piece of bubble wrap. Take that out. Run that. No, it's raining. I hear the birds singing. They don't mind. We lived out in Oregon, we used to call it liquid sunshine. Because it rained all the time. <laughs> so you gotta pretend that you like it. It does make everything grow. Makes that garden grow. It's gonna be such a beautiful gardening year. Everybody's got their gardens going. so fun in Maine to go from the dead of winter to the heat of summer. We have a pretty distinct difference in our season, so it's kind of interesting and we love it. All right, that looks good. A couple of little dirty bits. I'm just going to gently hold on to that wool and pull those out. Yeah. Okay. Looking good. Now I'm going to put away my fiber here because I'm all done with that. I'm going to cover this with the mesh. We're going to give it a little bit of water. You can see that I am not exact with anything, you guys. It doesn't have to be. It's felting. It's kind of fun to just see what happens when you just let loose a little bit. There we go. Press that down. Okay, let's flip it over. We are done adding fiber now. This is the fun part. I'm just gonna make sure that none of those edges need to be flipped over. Oh, we do have some edges, hang on. Hang on, we got some little edges. We're just gonna make sure those little edges are all pulled up and over. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. If there's something like this little piece of straw, just gently pull it up. There we go. There we go. Got rid of that. And then push it down. I do have some little tools off on the side here. I have my little felting needle in case I need it, and I have a little pair of scissors in case I need them. Okay, I think that looks good. Now we're just going to cover this little puppy up. I'm just going to start applying some pressure. I have a fun little tool here that I just got recently, and this is just a little piece of clay. It's made in Maine, and um, I ordered it from a company called The Woolery. I really like The Woolery, um, like wool, like sheep's wool, but The Woolery has all these different tools for not just wet felting and needle felting, but also for spinning, and they have different types of wool. Like if you don't have your own sheep like I do, you can get different wools from them, and it's really a cool website, so check out the Woolery. I like that a lot. And they send you a little sticker that says you're a flockster. <laughs> you're part of their fiber flock. So all I'm doing is I'm taking this little piece of ceramic. It has these little ridges and I'm just applying pressure. The pressure is just pushing out the air and letting the soap and the water and the fibers start to open up and lock together. So I'm gonna just press a few times and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off that bubble wrap layer and I'm going to just turn it on an angle and just gently get these edges and make sure that my edges all get a little bit of a rub. strengthens your edges right off the bat so that you can be a little bit rougher when you start the felting. So now I'm just going to press down. You can see water and soap is just kind of coming out and moving around and that's what you want to see. I 
this point, you don't have to just be pressing. You can start doing little circles like this, but gently. Or you could do a little back and forths, but gently. I'm just going to do this for a little bit, and then we're going to flip it over and do the same thing on the other side, because we want it to all be even. go back to some pressing, make sure that those fibers are really locking. And I've really been liking this stone because it's been saving my hands a little bit. My hands were getting really um, dried out from all the Dawn dish soap that I use. So I did try some other different types of soap, like there is this soap here. This is from the Woolery. It's an olive oil soap um, recommended for felting, and I tried it and I just don't like it. You know, it's just, it's not the same as Dawn dish soap and it doesn't foam the same and it's, I'm just used to my, I'm used to my Dawn. So that's what I use. All right, I've got this pretty nice. What we're gonna do is just put our little sandwich back together here and flip it over. Puppies are like, who are you talking to? There it is. Take my little tool here and do some nice little presses. And then I'll do some little circles. And then the opposite way. You can do any kind of motion that is comfortable for you, but if it starts to feel like you're like in one spot for too long, you need to move on. Don't just sit and obsess over one little spot forever. It's gonna look weird. It all has to be even. So you just keep on moving. Look at these edges. I can also take my fingers and just kind of really make sure that those corners are pronounced there. I can also take my fingers and just flip the project over the, or underneath the, um, I put the mesh underneath the project, just under the lip of it, all the way around. This kind of helps to get those really edges really reinforced. It's so fun to go from just fluffy angora wool to an actual like fabric within an hour within a half hour it's pretty incredible for you fiber artists out there i used to struggle with crochet <laughs> for so long and then when i tried wet felting for the first time and you can make something like a hat or a scarf or baby booties in like a half hour and it's just so fun. It's such a tactile experience. It had me. It had me at quick and easy. All right, let's flip this guy over and see. Actually, let's open it up and see what it looks like real quick. Oh, hello. Got some little wrinkles over there. Edges are looking pretty good. Ooh, pretty nice, you guys. I touch along the resist, it's nice and close to the felt or to the, um, the wool. Looking good, this is gonna be a good pair. Every time you felt, you never know, it might come out good, it might come out bad, but even if it doesn't come out the way you want, it's an experience and it's a good one because you've learned something. Every time I make a mistake, I just feel like, hey, that's me learning something, I'm getting better. You have to make some mistakes, you have to crack some eggs and, uh, Make some mistakes before you can get really good at something. So don't just say, oh, I did such a great job because I succeeded. You should say, oh, I tried my best and it didn't turn out the way I wanted, but I'll try again and I'll get better. Life lessons from Auntie Kel. Jeez, I get really philosophical when I wet felt you guys. Okay. It's kind of fun at this point because as it starts to bunch together, it really starts to like take on a little bit of a thickness to it. So I can like feel this cute little thick project working itself together down here. It wants to be booties. If 
you're doing it on the outside of bubble wrap and it feels like it's just a little bit too stuck and it's not gliding, add a little bit of water to the outside and then it'll glide really nicely. Do, 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 do. Pressing, twisting, and twirling. a stage that's called the pre-felt stage. It's like it wants to be felt, it's holding together pretty well, but it's still very soft and fragile so you wouldn't want to just like take your hands and start working it yet. But I do want it to start to hold together more cohesively. Those fibers have already started to lock together. So that's why we have it on top of this little bamboo here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start to roll it. And all I do is I just roll it up and then we're going to roll it in our little towel here and we're just going to do some little press in rolls very gently because we just started and I don't want those fibers to move too much Good. Those wrinkles mean that it's starting to shrink up and hold together. And so we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to just do it the opposite direction this time. So I'm going to just roll it up. This time it's upside down from what it was last time. And I'm going to roll it up in this little towel here. Some nice gentle press and turns. Okay, let's see how it looks. Try to open it the right way. Here we go. Good. All right, let's do it this way. long way a few times, once on each side. So now I'm just going to turn it, um, the, or I've done it the short way, now I'm going to do it the long way. There we go. So I do this, a little bit of soap is coming out just because the soap is in the fiber and it's really foaming. That's why. Okay. And we'll do it the opposite way again. So we'll just take this guy it over. Mid direction. I don't count my rolls. I know some people are like counting all their rolls. I don't know. How do you count the rolls that you do so fast like that? I don't know. Very, very soapy. That's a good sign. Oh. Holding together pretty nicely. Oh, yeah. All right. If I pick it up now, you can see it's actually... Oh, yes. Got these little wrinkles. That is so good. We're going to do this just like a few more times. I'm just going to roll it real fast. But the wrinkles are what we want. The wrinkles show that it's starting to hold together, it's starting to shrink up, it's already turned into felt, and now the felt is just going to um, bind up together. So let's do some rolls, let's see, which direction? This direction? 
sure let's do it with the towel this time. I can press a little bit harder this time because we've already been through this once on each side and it's holding together very, very well. We don't have any bald spots or anything. So there's one side. I'm just gonna take my project, flip it over. Roll it up again. It gets really squishy <laughs> and really soapy. the resist. So exciting and I can show you my next fun little tool that I got. All right. Here we go. Oh yeah, we've shrunk down quite a bit. Good, good, good. Nice and bubbly. All right, here's our little project. It just keeps on wanting to shrink up so the next thing we have to do is take out the resist from the inside. Um, you can see it's buckling and it just wants to come out. So what I like to do is I just turn it on its half like this and get a good little crease so that I know where to cut. And take my little scissors and I give it a little snip on this side. This is how I got into the problem of cutting through my resist and I cut through on this side. There we go. Now I just pick it up like this. I find my way onto the center top of the resist, hopefully. Nope, just cut right through the resist. So don't do what I just did. And then I'm just gonna go right down the line. Maybe if I had like a different color resist, it would be easier. Like I've heard of vets who will do the underdressing on a cast in like bright pink so they can see it when they cut through. Yeah, I cut that real good, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Oh well, I can make a new one. So I cut through on one side, I'm just going to flip it over. Now you don't have to use straight scissors, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. There we go. Got through all the layers somehow managed not to cut through the entire resist, although I cut through most of it. So now I have these two little booties sitting on this little plastic resist. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently turn it inside out. And in doing so, I am removing the booty from the resist. So there's one. Same thing with this one. I'm just gonna take it, turn it inside out, pull that resist out. There's our resist. I'll have to make a new one later. <laughs> Turn this little booty inside out. Good. So we have these two little booties now. They are soft felted. They're not perfectly finished yet and they're really big and they're gonna shrink up to be quite a bit smaller. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our next fun little tool. I got this nice little washboard at an antique shop um, in our town the other day and it was just sitting outside on the sidewalk and so I bought it but it has on one side a little rough abrasive side with these ridges, and on the other side it's smoother and it says it's for silks, hosiery, and lingerie or handkerchiefs. So this is the soft side that we're gonna use for cashmere. All we're gonna do is I wanna take my hand, put it inside the little booty, just like that, and I'm just gonna gently go like this and rub, and I'm just rubbing like that, but in doing so, the edges or the ridges where the overlapping bits from each side touch together, I'm just gonna smooth them out. So I'm just going through, 
And then I'm going to go around, and as I do this, I'm just going to turn the little booty a little bit each time. And then when I get with my this direction, my fingers are in the toes of the booty, so it just kind of fits my hand like this, and I go over the top of the booty, which is actually the bottom of the booty. And I'm just gently rubbing. While I'm doing this, it also helps to kind of cinch and squeeze that edge between your thumb and your hand because that edge is kind of a raw edge after you cut it. But if you just kind of gently squeeze while you're doing this, it just helps to cinch it together. Okay. Okay, good. So now I have my two little booties. One. have just not been as rough with this one. The second one I was a little bit rougher. So I'm just going to go through the first one a second time real quick and just in doing this it's going to make it a little bit smaller. same size now. What I like to do now is just some abrasion and I'm just going to go gently like this. I'm going to use one slipper to just go over and abrase the other one. I'm just going to do a little bit of light agitation and then I flip them and I do the other way. Felting just likes agitation. If you don't agitate it's not going to shrink up small enough. So we just have to agitate these little booties so that they shrink up small enough. And what I want to do is keep on opening them up here and there. Use my other hand to just really rub those edges. But you can already see that they're starting to look like cute little booties. Now I need to cut down one more little area. If you wanted, you could take... We're just going to make these nice and flat real quick. If you wanted, you could take a nice um, pair of scissors that have those like scalloped edges or something like this, and you could cut the edges in like a scalloped way. I just like a nice natural edge, so I'm gonna do a natural edge. But I am gonna take my scissors, and I'm gonna find the center right here in the middle, and I'm just gonna cut one little snip, whoop, bam. And take a deep breath, do another one, ba bing a snip on each one and all that does is it opens up the booty so that we can make the actual booty shape. Okay, Let's turn them back inside out so that they are the right side. Not that it matters, this is all one color, but if I had a pattern, now we would be able to see the pattern again because we flipped them inside out already. There we go. All right. Now what we're gonna do is just some more gentle rubbing. A little bit harder now actually it's not that gentle we're just going to do some nice agitation with our booties they're nice and soapy we're going to use this board to just keep on rubbing them and turning them if i want i can take each booty and roll it on itself and then i can rub them on the board this way get the sausages roast it on the grill opposite way now. Let's turn them inside out. Do it this way. Sausages. Let's get this into the shape of a booty. Just see how it looks. So there's my little foot. 
here's your little foot on this one. Let's get into the shape of a booty. There it is, little booty shape, little foot. Okay. There's our little booty shape. Let's take this guy and fold it down over the top like that. Just give it a nice little gentle fold. Aww. See my barn kitty spray out the window. There we go. Got a nice little fold, nice and natural. If you feel like it's too big on one side, you can absolutely trim it at this point. And I'm going to. I think this is just a little bit too big on this one side, so I'm just going to trim it down. trim it down now so that it has time to refilt that edge. I'll just set that to the side. Save your scraps. You can always use them for something else later. All right, these look pretty nice and even. Cute little booties. So I'm going to put them in the booty shape like this. Cute. Put down the little collar like that. And I'm going to start rolling them from the toe up. At this point, I'm just going to be rolling and shrinking these little booties. They are already formed and felted, but I just want to keep on like shaping them. So that just means roll them. Um, and then you know, flip them inside out and roll them again. The opposite way. to one, you have to do the other. Lots of just squeezing, compressing, getting those fibers to lock together. Oh, we are starting to look like little baby booties now. Here we go. They're getting smaller. So, I like to just take some time with my fingers, three fingers, right down into that baby booty. I'm just going to do some little bit of back and forths on this board. A little bit of agitation. booty but we just need to do some more of the twist and roll on each side so we'll twist it and roll it that way we'll twist it and roll it this way do some squeezing fingers into the toes and do a little bit more of this agitation. And if you need to, you can put that little collar back up. doing all of this on bubble wrap before and it just wasn't felting up as fast. You can take your little baby booties, put them together, do some little twists, roll-ups. Okay, nice squeeze compression. All right, I think we're looking good. These have gotten substantially smaller. Let's see how much smaller they've gotten. Let's find our resist here and see if they've gotten any smaller. Oh, good. Oh, we are shrinking up quite nicely. So, you can see that it's shrunk up quite a bit. It can still go a little bit smaller, but it's gonna help when I run them under some hot water. 
So what I'm going to do is just turn on my faucet and run them under some nice hot water. If it looks like this part at the top is just a little bit too saggy baggy, you can do some little rolls from the side to take it in a little bit. Every time you do a roll like that, it makes it smaller and it shrinks it. So I'll do that on both of these. Just roll in my little corners. I'm just going to do one more nice little toe roll on each side from the toe up. Okay. It'll be nice and rough on these now because they are really holding together. I'm going to take them and put them under some hot water. Now I turn the water to cold, and while it's getting cold, I'm just going to take these guys real quick. Got my two little slippers here. They've been in hot water, so they're nice and warm. I'm just going to shape them into a little booty shape again. There we go. Shape this one into a little booty shape again. There we go. All the soap is out of them or at least most of it. Now I have these two little booties. I check to see if their size is accurate, pretty close. Put my fingers down in the toes and I'm just gonna gently do some little agitation just to make sure that the foot is nice and solid. There we go. Same thing with the heel. Put my fingers in the heel and just rub it on my little bubble wrap with the bamboo mat below it, just to get it nice and agitated, nice and strong. Okay, I have my two tiny little slippers. Oh, let's give it another roll. Let's roll it that way, and then let's roll it that way. There we go, that's better. It gets a little bit smaller, like substantially smaller every time now. Oh, I did pick up a little bit more soap. It's okay, because the next step is we're going to rinse it in some cold water. And we're going to put some vinegar in the water. And I've just read that you do this to like neutralize the wool and bring it back to its natural state. I don't know what that means, but we're going to do it. So we've got our little water, it's cold water. We've got some nice white vinegar. We'll put that in there. We'll dunk our little baby booties in here again. I'm going to squeeze in to get all that soap out. Okay. Now, I'm going to take a fresh, clean towel. Cleanish. And we're going to take our little baby booties. We're going to fling them and just toss them as hard as we can just to like let the fibers relax. These fibers have been through a lot today, so we're just going to let them relax. We put them through the hot water, we put them through the cold water, we've put them through the vinegar. So now we just want them to chill. And every time you do this, it just makes them relax a little bit. Now we can get our shape back. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to take some paper towels. I like to do about three paper towels in each booty. So we're gonna just go one, two, three. One, two, three. And we're gonna take our paper towels. And I'm just gonna start by tucking it into the toe. Tuck it in that toe. Take a second one. 
tuck it into the heel. One in the toe, one in the heel, and then one that goes right down in the middle and just fills in the shape of the booty. So there's one. are going to dry overnight and then tomorrow I'm going to take out my little paper towels and I will glue on a pair of flowers one on each booty oh these are so cute there we go same size you can like squeeze it and then get it the right shape that you want at this point Tap, tap, tap to make the bottom nice and flat. There. Get the nice shape on that booty. There we go. Macy, nobody's at the door. It's okay. All right. One booty is looking a little bit smaller than the other. So at this point, I can just kind of smoosh it. it to be a little smaller. There we go. There we go. Oh my god, Aaron's watching Silent Library down there. He's dying. <laughs> there, that's a little better. And I can always stretch this one out a little bit bigger to match it. There we go. That's better. Okay. Got my little booties got my little shapes into them. They're gonna sit overnight. Tomorrow I will glue on their little flowers and they will look a little something like this. So that's the before, that's the after. These ones came out actually pretty similar to these, a little bit bigger, which means I just didn't felt them as long. And the color is a little bit different because I used Applejack instead of Dreama. This is Applejack fiber with that little soft um, apricot color and this is Dreama but that's what they'll look like and that's how we make them <laughs> and thanks so much for watching <laughs> it's been fun doing a little felting video and I hope you guys all try felting because it's the best and I'm obsessed and soon you will be too all right love you happy felting